If you love classic cars, then Donald loves you. So today, I'm on the road in a 1970 Plymouth Superbird. Now, actually, just saying Plymouth Superbird would have been enough. I didn't need to give the year, since this is a one-year-only model. And we've talked about the Superbird before here on the Audrain Museum Network. And if you watch the uh, video for the opening of our exhibition, Land Yachts Cruising the Interstate Highways, you can watch here, you'll hear us talk about this car, which was included in that exhibition, uh, somewhat controversially for some. They didn't see how a Superbird fitted in as a land yacht, but we made the point then, and I still maintain it now, that yachts come in all forms. There are cruising yachts and luxury yachts, working yachts, and racing yachts. And this falls into the category of a racing yacht. Since obviously the Superbird was built for homologation purposes for Plymouth's entry into NASCAR racing to combat the uh, Torino Talladega and the Mercury Cyclone and as a counterpart for Dodge's own Daytona. And as such, this is a very interesting car. It certainly has captured the imagination of collectors, but it's also equally interesting to realize that when this car was new, the extreme styling of the aerodynamic additions, the nose cone and the huge wing, weren't particularly popular with customers buying a street car. And uh, many of these languished in showrooms for years later, some of them were even reconverted to stock Roadrunner configuration. But uh, we're fortunate today to be in this car, and this is an interesting car to drive on the street. Um, as those of you who have watched other videos here on the Audrain Museum Network, and I know that you have, and if you're watching this one and have not subscribed, do so right now. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be reminded of when we put up new content. But you know that I have particular thoughts about track day cars for the street. And of course, this is not a track day car. Such thing didn't exist when this car was built. But this is sort of a clone replica, but by the manufacturer, of a car built for racing. Now, the kind of racing this car was built for is not the kind of driving which I'm doing right now. This is not meant for windy country roads. This is meant for blasting around on the straight, the flat. The 375 horsepower that this 440 puts out is a lot of power for this chassis. And the power comes on immediately. You push down that accelerator pedal, it's there. So, it's not a car for the twisties, that's for sure. It's got very good brakes, especially for the period. And the engine has that characteristic that you expect of high performance engines. Sort of a slightly lumpy idle, and then as soon as you put your foot into it, everything smooths out and the power is right there. It's also interesting to note that the aerodynamic aids on this car, again designed for the racetrack, have no effect whatsoever on the car on the street until you're going at least 60 miles per hour. And I think the speedometer is a bit optimistic at this point. It says I'm doing rather more than that and I don't think I am. But whatever aerodynamic effect that it has, are somewhat negated by a bumpy road that unsettles the car in a way that these aerodynamic aids were not designed to handle. But it's very interesting for a big car, and this is a big car, 
the handling is not bad. It also seems to have a slightly better build quality than many of the high performance Chrysler's of the time had. There's a bit of a rattle, but it's coming from the exterior mirror of the car, which is a bit loose. Everything inside the car is actually pretty solid. And it's not one of those cars, oh, you can only drive it in a straight line, because the car will turn. But it's also not a car that, as they often say about very big cars, a big car sort of shrinks around you as you drive it. This car is not shrinking. It's feeling every bit of the long car that it is, with that extended nose. But the power forgives a lot. The scoops on the hood were put there on the race car to cover holes that would help to reduce air pressure under the fender to help keep the front end down. On the road car, they are simply decorative. The fender underneath is perfectly solid. And I can't say that I feel that the rear wing is really sort of keeping the rear end of the car planted in any meaningful way. But the car does handle well for a car of this length and this power. And of course, what would a Superbird be beep, beep. without the horn? <laughs> it's a strange and wonderful combination of the very intentional and, and dramatic and the sort of whimsical. The idea that there's this big car based on an intermediate chassis of the time, built for family cars. And this wild V8 engine, that dramatic nose cone, and that huge spoiler in the back. It's really quite interesting. My mother actually had a 1973 Plymouth Satellite Station Wagon. And it's strange to say, driving this fire-breathing, high-performance Superbird, but I'm reminded of my mother's Satellite Station Wagon. And this is sort of the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, or the Hulk version of that car. You can imagine this mild-mannered green satellite station wagon by day and the wild superbird by night. It's a car that really goes. And even though this isn't one of the ultra-rare four-speed manuals, it's still a car that provides a great deal of entertainment. Again, I think a lot of people don't give the credit to the way that these automatic transmissions are very, very well matched to the characteristics of the power delivery of these V8 engines. And it just wants to pull in the mid-range exactly where you want it to. This is a really interesting car. Because just as so many of its type, you don't really expect it to do well the things it wasn't specifically designed to do. But it's a much better all-rounder than anyone could imagine. And it is a very entertaining drive. It's 
so to our friends that said this isn't a land yacht I say come on take it out for a race you might bring the America's Cup back with a Plymouth <laughs> who knows